Okay, a couple things. This next step is very critical. If you mess up here, you might as well get an 18 inch by 18 inch sheet of tempered glass and turn your frame into an end table. We're gonna be mounting the Y axis and because the Z axis also attaches to the Y axis, we have to get this right. Um, what I've done is I've marked from the bottom of this cross member, 14 and one quarter inches here, here, and there's also marks on the other side. This is the side of the three as you can see. These will eventually mount somewhere near here. This mark is not permanent. This is not necessarily exactly where we're going to mount the rods. But it just, it's, a, it's a starting point. I fix a couple of the SHH, SHF-12s. And try to get this lined up a little bit. The trick here is ensuring that this rod is parallel to the print bed. It doesn't necessarily need to be parallel to the frame. But it is paramount that is parallel to the print bed itself. And that's that's where the multiple steps just like on the SHF12s that support the Z axis, we want the flat of this bracket to be flush with the frame. Okay, testing for the y-axis being parallel to the print platform, the z-platform, is dependent on a couple of variables. One being that the distance from edge to edge on the front and rear of the printer are equal. So that you have a perfect square, not a trapezoid. You know, you want a square equal my I've already measured mine and it's correct yours should be too if you square everything up correctly in the beginning when we're building the frame the second factor that affects being able to measure and the means that we'll use is if your linear rods are perfectly straight hardened precision rods should be straight but your mileage will vary depending on the vendor you purchase yours okay, from. A quick hack method for making sure that the x-axis linear rods are parallel to the bed and to themselves. First thing we're going to do, we use, we use the bed itself as a reference. We're going to take, take some clamps against your underside rail on the bed clamp it that spot you should have about an inch of overlay and bring it all the way up so that the flanged um, linear bearing is all the way to this bracket here so there is no play do that on both sides on the front we take our triangle with the flat edge, push it up to the front side of the rail and make sure that's perfectly flat against the underside of the Z platform. Clamp it in place. When you clamp it, make sure that it's actually flat. And make sure it's at an angle. Because as you see here, we want this angle to come out this way so we have this flat surface. 
do that on the other side as well. From here, we want to measure without pushing down on this. If we push down on that, you'll see we can actually change our measurement. We want to find one and one quarter inch. And that will be where we have the split in the SHF12. We do that on both sides, take that measurement, lock in that spot exactly. We'll do the same thing. We'll move these to the rear and get another measurement. And again, we want this to be perfectly flat. And you want the edge of the triangle to go all the way to the rail itself. And at a slight angle so that we can measure this to one and a quarter inch at the split. I suggest with these, just noticing that, instead of clamping them on the outside, just so you can measure this here, put these on the inside, like it is in the back here. Also important, whatever ruler or measuring device you use for the first one, use the same ruler for all of them. I'm done setting the y-axis linear rods parallel to the print bed. Next we'll do some initial fastening on securing these with screws. We'll have to take off the, the entire back of the printer using the wing nuts on the sides. We'll keep the z-axis intact and just take the entire... Now we have the mounts attached right here. Screw it through the, screw it through the front. Once again, my bolts are a little bit long, so I'm going to have to cut these down and I'm going to end up putting a, a cap nut over the top just to pretty it up and also to keep it from cutting anyone that walks by it. For the time being, we will reassemble the printer. Next step is to make some printed parts, particularly the extruder carriage and where the bearings ride on the Y axis so we can um, fabricate the X axis. Your 3D printer should look similar to this right now. To recap, we attach the y-axis, drill the holes through, um, put cap nuts on for safety. You want to tighten up the nuts here on both sides and then tighten this, the front bracket tensioner on both sides. You can tighten up the ones in the rear but I wouldn't tighten them, you know, all the way down. We want this one tight so there's no movement in the bar so it can't rotate or slide back and forth. The reason we don't tighten this in the back as much is because this is a removable part. And once we take off the wing nuts to remove the back of the printer, if this is tightened, it's going to grip onto this, which grips onto the front side of the frame and prevents you from removing it. So this, it needs to be snug, but easy enough to loosen when it's time to, you know, separate this. There are a couple things that we'll do next. We'll start working on the x-axis.